Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express Podcast. As always, just kidding, new intro today. <laughs> I have Mackenzie, as always. Kara has departed this earth. We wish her the best of luck. Jesus. And our new permanent seat on the College Express Podcast is Abby. Hello. So, <laughs> you've all seen Abby once before. I forget what episode number. We'll say five. I was in a October. bunny suit. Halloween. Halloween. Not this Halloween, last Halloween? Last Halloween. And, uh... She's joining us. Uh, you want to introduce what role you used to do and why you're transitioning to this team and are the new permanent seat. Also, what school did you go to? <laughs> okay, Tyler, thank you. Um, my name is Abby Curtis. I went to Northeastern. I was a transfer student, and I was an SEO copywriter here at Carnegie Dartlet, and um, now I'm going to be a content strategist for College Express. So I'll be around. Yeah, so that's very exciting news. We're glad to have you a part of the team. And our special guest for this month's podcast is <laughs> Dan. So, Dan, you want to introduce what you do here at Carnegie Dartlet and where you went to school? Absolutely. Well, first off, thank you guys for uh, having me. Excited to be on today. I am a digital advertising specialist here at Carnegie, and I went to Marist College. All right. Where's that at? Uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. Right on the Hudson River. Okay. Is that near you? <laughs> Champlain? Not even close. Well, <laughs> a little bit. So, pop in the leaf, you know? Hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, this week or month, whatever you want to call it, we're talking all about everything you need to know about. <laughs> it is the transfer episode. So, buckle on that seatbelt, and we're going to get right into it. The first question is, is there a limit you must reach with classes credits before you can transfer? This question was asked by... Azawa underscore the underscore crazy underscore cat underscore lady. Um, so when it comes to credits and classes, I think something you definitely want to do is reach out to the new guidance counselors at your school or new school and see which credits from your old school will transfer over because some schools do have a max amount of transferable credits. So you want to check to make sure that the credits that you take do transfer over. If some of them don't, you have a plan for how you're going to make up those credits and graduate on time. Um, I mean, I don't know, you transferred. Is that something you had to do? Yeah, I mean, as, as well as having a maximum, most schools do have a minimum, um, which makes sense, obviously. They sure. don't want to just go off your good word that you've been <laughs> studious and doing your thing. Um, so oftentimes folks start thinking about transferring mid-semester in their either first or second semester, but they probably haven't met a minimum amount of credits for most schools at that point. Um, so I personally actually had to take classes at a community college in the interim between my first school and my final school. Um, so you definitely, you know, like Mackenzie said, you have to pay attention to the school's guidance on what the maximum is, what the minimum is, and most schools are pretty transparent about it. Um, but you may have to reach out and ask to talk to somebody about it if it's not clearly legible on the website. I think there's also a rule if the school is not regionally accredited, that, and then you're going to a school that is regionally accredited, then the credits won't transfer over in that case. So maybe before you choose a school, see if it's an accredited school. <laughs> yeah, I think just going back to is there a limit you must reach, technically no. If you just want to drop out and you, you can't stand that school, you can do that. Uh, it is a it is an issue. Tyler's giving you permission. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to a school, you're paying X amount of dollars, and you're like, I need to be here to get those credits. Money's money, so it, it does become a hassle. And so what Abby just said, going to a community school for a little bit to get certain credits is definitely a valid option. So even if you're not getting the full credit and you're just extremely unhappy and you're paying up the wazoo for it, you might want to yeah. consider doing that. Uh, also, kind of to turn this a little bit, if you're in a program and you're not only thinking about transferring to a different school, but you actually want to transfer to a different program, just take the credits that are the general credits. Mm. And then if you're in that same school for a while, and it actually goes both ways, but if you're in that same school for a while, you can then transfer to another program, hopefully getting into the program that you want to get into. So you could come in as a general studies and then transfer into business or whatever it is that you might want to do. Um, and the same approach where if you're taking the general credits and then you're cutting out, there is a minimum, as Abby said, there's a max usually, uh, and then transferring over to whatever the other school is. So 
Transferring, yes, can be considered transferring to a different school, but it can also be transferring into a different program at your school. So that's just some food for thought. <laughs> I know a friend who transferred schools, and she said that before she chose the school she wanted to go to, she actually went to the guidance counselors at the different schools, and they evaluated her credits and were able to like hand her a piece of paper showing her what credits will transfer to that school and which ones won't. Mm -hmm. And she said it was different depending on the school. Yeah, so yeah. that's what it idea. absolutely okay. is. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Just having an open line of communication um, with the guidance counselors and admissions counselors at the schools that you're interested in, even if you haven't been really, you know, deep into the application process for those schools yet, they'll be happy to talk to you because obviously they want you to come to their school if you're a good fit. So they want to talk to you. So don't hesitate to reach out. I think a lot of schools have not just guidance counselors, but they have specifically transfer guidance counselors too. Uh, so yeah. don't hesitate to reach out to any of the missions and, and get pointed in the right direction. Right. Uh, you okay. said just going on the website. Some school websites can be a little uh, outdated. So uh, <laughs> the, website, with the information yeah. they great, share. Great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Windows 95 booting up. <laughs> but you can uh, definitely reach out, call, talk to somebody and get that connection. And not only is it you want to transfer to that school, but now you're actually building a rapport with that, with somebody at that school. So if you're thinking of transferring and you may not get in, this person could give a recommendation too. Mm -hmm. So that's also a benefit. And if you're like me and you don't like talking to strangers on the phone, you can probably find their email addresses on the website too. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, question number two. How do I adjust to a new school quickly? Well, I think that changes, you know, person to person and the type of person that you are. Um, you know, I know overall the one thing that I say to transfers to incoming freshmen, and, uh, you know, as a whole is just be yourself and don't be afraid to get involved. That's the big thing is getting involved. Um, you know, if you're going to adjust to a new school, you have academics to adjust to, but then you also have that, you know, outside of academics. And if you're going to make new friends and, and, you know, find that future home for the rest of your college, you want to get involved. And whether that's joining clubs or, you know, playing sports, whatever it may be, definitely get involved. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, adjusting to the academics. That's obviously an adjustment school to school. And you want to make sure that you're prepared and just studying and staying on top of that. Um, similar to, you know, that uh, admissions have different counselors for transfers. They might also have resources specifically for transfer students that you can reach out to to talk about, you know, your academic path and, and the path that you're on. Because that might be different now than some of the other people that you're at school with. Yeah, I know some schools have like transfer centers specifically for transfer students, obviously. <laughs> Um, so that's probably, they probably have a lot of helpful clubs or like people you can meet, just like meet somebody new. Uh, but also just like finding, like if you're like moving to a campus, living on campus, just like finding a way to get comfortable there. Maybe find, like joining the gym, finding a new like restaurant you like going to, just like establishing, establish, <laughs> establishing yourself First at the try. school. Third try. Oh. That's great. <laughs> Good job. Try, but... What did you say? First try. I thought you said fourth. No, no. Okay. First try. Give me a Anyways, um, <laughs> some schools will even allow you to request to live with another transfer student. I know that was um, something that I wish that I had done. In hindsight, I actually opted for a single room, and that was extremely isolating. <laughs> so um, I would not recommend doing that. Um, I think it's a good idea to at least see if it's an option to live with someone who, who's also a transfer. Um, especially, again, I was in a single dorm and I was in a freshman dorm. So although I made friends, it was not, it didn't really feel, it wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> Did you so, have uh, orientation with the freshman? No, like I had a transfer of... orientation okay. uh, that I did not attend. I was going to say, how did it go? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so go to that. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the if the same things that happen for the freshmen are going to happen for transfer. Yeah. So having a transfer orientation, and sometimes they'll actually lump you in with the freshman orientation too, depending on the school. But uh, definitely attend those. And as Dan was saying, just that in and of itself is going to have a ton of events in it. Don't be uh, scared. I know, obviously, there's different types of personalities and the introverts and the extroverts. 
try to break out of your shell, even if it's just a little bit. Um, if it's something that interests you in the least bit, try to make the effort to go there. I know it's difficult, especially bearing an introvert is pulling teeth to try to get her to go out somewhere. <laughs> um, so if you, if you do those things, uh, for example, like I just said, my wife, extreme introvert, joined drama club. And so she was a, she wasn't a transfer student, but she was a commuter student. So she kind of had that similar, um, didn't really know everybody on campus, wasn't at the orientations, and never had that connection with anybody. Then she joined drama club, met a bunch of her friends, and they stayed her friends for the four years that she was there. So I think there's different ways that you can get in uh, to different cliques and different groups, and definitely should push yourself in any sort of way to get into something. Uh, and it could just be you and one other person just hanging out. Right? It's, All you uh, need is one friend. <laughs> that's right. You sort of spoke to it saying, you know, room with another transfer student. You're yeah. not alone in this right. process. So, you know, there are other transfers and there's other people that maybe not ne necessarily transfer, but they're new to the school with the same, you know, the, all the same. And so getting to know them and, and getting involved with them definitely helps. Right. Yeah, I wish I had been able to live with someone who else who is also a transfer. But one thing did happen that was really nice is one day I was extremely late to a lecture and I saw another girl who, you know, just kind of looked like she probably came from the same kind of town that I did. Like she was dressed the same way that I was and she looked equally as lost and late. It ended up that she was also a transfer and we were both looking for our lecture hall. We both were lost and late and then we became friends. And two semesters later, we went to Barcelona together. So you can find your people, and it doesn't necessarily mean you can only be friends with people who are also transfers, but it helps to have that lifeline that you, you're going through that similar experience. You're no longer freshman, but it feels so new. It's nice to have somebody to navigate those waters with, for sure. I actually had a girl my sophomore year who transferred halfway through the semester into my classroom, and... I guess the class was very different from how she was taught at her old school, so she was having trouble adjusting to just the small class size professor. So she actually asked me to study with her after school and we became friends and I kind of helped her that way. So maybe reach out to kids in your class, especially if you're struggling like that, to try to get some one-on-one -on -one help. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's in also just similar vein to if you're uncomfortable asking the students in your class. If you ask the professor, they'll hook you up. And usually there's like study centers too. So you can go for help anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. I don't say anywhere, but you can go to help. <laughs> Not anywhere. <laughs> and be okay. Yeah. But I, and that's, that's another thing too. Just explore whatever city you're into. Uh, you might not meet people on campus that you click with. But if you're downtown somewhere and you're at whatever the local restaurant, like I think you were saying, um, in a different hangout spot, like um, there's a place on Champlain, the Java um, Blackwater. Um, so, like, if Java you go, Blackwater? I think it was just called Blackwater. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> he wanted to call it Java. Yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't make sense, but he knew it. <laughs> Everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's Vermont, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, muddy Waters, that's what it was. Hey, muddy Waters. That sounds yeah. disgusting. So, if you go down there, it's, well, it's just it's a coffee place. So it's if you not go down, appetizing. But <laughs> Java Blackwater, you were close. Java Blackwater, Muddy Water. Muddy Water. First try. First muddy try. Water, that's, that's a terrible name. See? It's a great it's like they just went I don't know money. if it's still open, but we'll Probably find not. We'll Free find advertising for Muddy Water. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you go down Sponsor there, you the pod. Music. <laughs> They're sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> Good old Blackwater. So if you go down into the local areas, you can usually find people that um, are into the same things that you are, and even if it's like going out to music events in the area, a lot of the places will have, depending on what city you're in, but different events. Smooth that, jazz. Smooth jazz and ice cream, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Call back to our podcast from way long time ago, but relax with smooth jazz and ice cream. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Yeah. I think adjustment to is almost the same thing. It's I, going right back to Dan's point at the very start is it depends on you. So if you're somebody that is able to just go out and make friends, it sounds like whoever asked this question is probably a little shy and uh, reserved. And that's not a big deal. You'll find people that are like you. You might even find somebody that is 
completely opposite of you and gets you to break out of your shell and experience all the things around campus. And uh, So yeah, don't be afraid to uh, try new things. Go out and have fun. Give it a chance too, you know, don't just, you transfer there for a reason, so if you don't all of a sudden find that reason in day one, you know, give it a chance and get yourself, you know, acclimated before you just... You write know, it off. Write it off, exactly. Yeah, maybe if you transfer and you're not really adjusting that first two weeks, you might be like doing something wrong, maybe you're not joining as many clubs, meeting new people, so maybe that's the problem. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> Doing it she was trying wrong. to put it nicely. You're not doing college right now. I think what Mackenzie's trying to say is that... <laughs> well, no, to be honest, um, to be serious for a moment, when I transferred, I, I wasn't happy about it because it's not... It's a process, and it was a big change for me because I happened to go to school down in Florida, so I had to pack my stuff back up and head back north, and I felt like maybe I failed... Um, myself or my family somehow. Um, so when I got to Northeastern, I wasn't in the best place mentally. So it took me a little while just to get back to that homeostasis, that baseline Abbey of my bubbly, friendly, happy self. So at first it was a lot harder than it was down the line because just how I was feeling at the time. So maybe your reason for transferring is different than mine was, but you might not be 100% feeling your best when you get to your new school. So try to give yourself a break. And if you don't feel like joining a club the very first day, you don't have to. But give yourself a little bit of time to just get back to that normalcy. And then see how you feel about it. Question three. Will my financial aid carry over to my new school? Very good question, very important thing to consider when you're transferring. Unfortunately, you can't just show up at your new school and have your financial aid carry over. Obviously, tuition is going to be different at your school, um, at your new school, and the way they evaluate your eligibility is going to be a little bit different. So from the school's point of view, you're coming in as brand new students. So they're doing everything from scratch. Your FAFSA, FAFSA? FAFSA. FAFSA. <laughs> FASFA. Um, FASFA. You don't have to redo it necessarily, but you do have to add your new school. Basically, FASFA offers a space to put in any school that you will be applying your federal financial aid it's to. Like the first thing you should do. Yeah. So add that school to your list. Um, and again, this is one of those things that you should definitely reach out to guidance counselors about. Um, and, you know, of course, like Tyler mentioned, there's a lot of faculty and staff that are very highly specialized at colleges and universities, so there may even be a counselor that specializes in transfer financial aid at your mm -hmm. new school, depending on the size of your school and what they have going on. Um, so find the right people to talk to, and then you can figure out how much aid you're going to be eligible for at your new school. Are there any scholarships and grants at your new school that you're eligible for? Um, so all of those things, you need to stay ahead of the curve with that and just make sure you're communicating with you know the schools that you're considering to make sure that it will be okay for your financial situation. But you do have to kind of start over, so to speak. The, you made a good point right there about <coughs> scholarships too. Some schools may have transfer uh, specific scholarships mm -hmm. and so if you maybe you have a scholarship at your old school and you're maybe afraid to transfer because you're like well i have this scholarship it might not be the exact same probably not mm -hmm. but there might be scholarships available for you at the new school so definitely something to pay attention to look out for deadlines look online mm -hmm. again collegeexpress.com so, college, college <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, go look out for that and, and pay attention to any of that. Yeah, I actually got a transfer. Well, it wasn't exactly transfer specific, but I got a grant, um, you know, for my first semester at Northeastern because of my academic excellence at my previous school. <laughs> <laughs> I was an excellent student, believe it or not. All right. So one thing uh, is uh, one, one next thing, uh, question. Is very aware of. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> Every everything you guys said was great, but if you do a private loan through anybody, they might not <laughs> accept that you're transferring, and so you'll have to go and ask for a deferment because if you don't, they're gonna expect you to start paying it back almost instantaneously. So mm -hmm. as soon as you transfer, 
you may be taking out new <coughs> loans but having to pay back loans at the exact same time and uh, <coughs> nobody wants that no so make sure that if you do have a private loan and it will not transfer transfer <laughs> transfer over to your new school to ask for a deferment usually it's going to be the three plus years maybe three and a half depending on when you're transferring yeah uh, make sure that you do that so you're not digging yourself further in the hole while you're at school and then at the end you can start paying everything off into one instead of doing it while you're at school because that's a nightmare right you can also go to the school's financial aid office if they do give you financial aid but it wasn't enough for you to be able to afford to go there you can go talk to them, um, maybe explain your circumstances if it's something like, that you really need more money for. They can try to work with you, see if they can get you more money. Sometimes they're flexible. Can try. Doesn't yeah, hurt. Yeah, does, yeah, exactly. It does not <laughs> hurt to try. Uh, go in there and ask, and usually financial aid packages for schools are very much varying school to school, and they can usually say, okay, we can only offer this much, and then you go in and talk to somebody, like, oh, here's an extra three, four grand. Yeah. Like, oh, well, where did that come from? Uh, and as Dan mentioned, the scholarships for specifically transfer students, so you can potentially transfer over some of the scholarships that you already have. Some of those might not be eligible with the new school. Again, it's very important to talk to a guidance counselor or somebody that's very specific in that school for financial aid, but see what transfers over. Even if you don't get X, Y, and Z, try to go out for new scholarships that are specific to transfer, and then uh, maybe you can negate some of that damage that you're going to be taking. And those scholarships aren't as competitive as other ones, so they're only transfer. So it might be easier to win them. Is the stat 36% transfer students? I don't know. I, think it's I don't know that stat. I want to say 39 Okay. I'm going to raise you 3%. I think 37. <laughs> so. 36, 39. It's a range. I don't have Sorry. an opinion. <laughs> oh, it's so not an opinion, Abby. You're supposed to say 38. That's, yeah. Can we just cover yeah, the bases? Just cover the bases, yeah. 38. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's uh, the financial aid package in general is number one. Uh, and, again, just to drill into your brain, sign up for FAFSA. FAFSA? FAFSA. FAFSA? FAFSA. FAFSA. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> so make sure you sign up for it right off the bat uh, put that school down so that you do have that aid if, if it's available for you um, check in with your lenders right off the bat if you did any private loans or anything that's outside of that make sure that it can transfer to the new school if it doesn't set up that deferment look at your scholarship see what transfers apply for new scholarships and I think that's a good coverage check, check. Yeah. nice what is question number four, you might ask? <laughs> question four is, what is the hardest part about transferring schools? So I think the hardest part about transferring schools is figuring everything out for financial aid, which we just went into in depth. <laughs> I think that's probably the most confusing part on any of those, other than, uh, I guess stress is what I, I'll say is the premium answer here, <laughs> because stress is what is going to be going through your mind 24-7, especially when you start doing the transfer. Abby mentioned right off the bat she felt like she was disappointing her family when you were going from Florida back to uh, up here in Northeastern. I think the stress on all sorts of angles, it's the stress on transferring, disappointing your family. You're not really disappointing your family. Hopefully not. Uh, if your family is okay. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, disappointing family. Um you know, if you were hanging out with your friends at that college, you were there and then you were like, hey, this isn't a good fit for me, disappointing your friends from that school. The stress of the financial aid package, I feel like stress encompasses everything. And the only way through it is to just take it day by day and do things as we discussed and reach out and talk to the guidance counselors, go out, meet new people, have new experiences. Try to get that financial aid, FAFSA, 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 as soon as you can, and then one step, one step, one step, and then the stress slowly starts to diminish a little bit, and then you're feeling more normalized, and you're more into a routine, more into your college experience, instead of a transfer experience. So I think that is my answer. I don't know about <laughs> you guys, if stress is your number one, or if it's uh, something else, um... I guess it would maybe like passport would be like terrible if you went like out of state to, or I mean out of country. That's stress um, too. So yeah. Stressful. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure, yeah. Keep adding the stress. Dealing with I, the government, stressful. Yeah. 
I think one of the hardest things might come to before actually transferring is making that decision. True. Yeah. So going back to you know disappointing your family, hopefully you're not, you're not, and I don't yeah. think you would yeah, be. You but would be. <laughs> but making that decision, you know, oh, am I going to graduate on time? You know, financially, all the questions that we've answered. Going back to those, having those run through your mind. You know, is it if I transfer? What if I don't like my next school? You know, how do I tell my friends? How do I tell my family? Just actually making that decision for yourself. You know, I know a friend that did transfer and it worked out perfectly. And it's because he just thought, you know, long term. So he was transferring and he said, you know what, maybe, you know, it just, I need that extra semester or I need that extra time. I'm going to make that best decision for me long term. And that was kind of the hardest part for him was just making that first step to begin transferring. Yeah, I agree. Especially if you at your old school had already like made friends, found like your foundation there, and but it just wasn't the right fit for you school wise, and then you transfer and you have to start that all over again. But you're going in and maybe it's second semester or something, and people already have like their friends, and sometimes it's hard to find a fit in that, it, or it can seem like it's hard. People are actually friendlier than you think they are. Always, but. Um, Wow. That part can, be, can be intimidating, and sometimes that can cause you to not want to transfer. People, people are terrible. Never friendly. I would Just say kidding. usually. <laughs> yeah, people are but I would echo that. I think my my two hardest parts. I think really they're both equally important. Academically, yes, I would say stress was a huge issue for me, um, especially in the beginning, trying to work through because. As we touched on earlier, you know, maybe you have a certain amount of credits that you're transferring over, but maybe not all of them contribute to the requirements for your major. So maybe there's a few classes that you took that are utterly useless for you now. And that can be really, really frustrating, both from a financial standpoint, an academic, st academic standpoint, um, because you feel like you have to kind of have a do-over. Um, but that's essentially what transferring is. It's an opportunity to start fresh. Um, so with that being said, I think the other hardest part for me was finding my place, um, both with friendship and activities, because when I was down in Florida, Greek life is huge down there, and I felt obligated to be a part of that, and it was also one of the only ways I knew how to make friends. Mm. Whereas in the North, it's really not as big, especially at a school like Northeastern. Um, they just, they had some Greek life, but not the sorority that I was in in Florida, and I also wasn't interested in joining Greek life at Northeastern. So it took me a while to find my way into a place that I felt comfortable and like I had an identity at the school. Um, but if there's one thing I can say about friendship, it's amazing how many friends I've kept from my original school, despite having, you know, the entire East Coast between us. Um, I was recently in my first ever college roommate's wedding. So you know, you do stay friends with the folks that you meet and are really special to you. Um, but then I made so many more friends at my new school and I was in such a better place that you just eventually find your place, your people. And yeah, I think when I was, you know, 19 or however old I was, I thought that people in established friend groups weren't open to new friends. And that's so silly because nobody's going to be like, you know what? We're good. Like, if people... If we have you, sex. <laughs> yeah. So if you join, you know, it's either a club or a team or if you just see people studying in your dorm, you can... Even if you're not... Like super super cool. Cool. Hey! <laughs> What are you doing over there? Don't interrupt them if they're busy. But I mean, I know it's not easy if you're not outgoing and you don't, you aren't comfortable putting yourself out there. But there are ways um, to make friends, I promise. And it might take a little longer because you feel like. Well, yeah, don't live alone. Don't live alone. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes yeah. you could have made. And I mean, obviously it worked out for you, but. Right. That is one thing that I think everybody kind of goes through when they're looking, even as a freshman, mm -hmm. is, oh, I want to just, I want to have a single. Yeah. No, you don't. No. You, no. you really don't. You don't know that you don't want it. But. Even yeah. if you're not best friends with your roommate, you still, like, have that person there. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have someone to just, even if you're not, you know, best friends, like you said, just to have someone there. Um, because, yeah, I was a brand new student at a relatively large school and even though I'm from the area and I had friends there 
from high school, I didn't want to just defer to them. Mm -hmm. Um, But because I was living alone, I was, you know, going back to my dorm and like, what do I do now? Like, it just, it wasn't conducive to making friendships and putting myself out there. And I'm an outgoing person, so that's that's saying a lot about the downfalls of living alone. So don't live alone. I think even, like you were just saying, with the study groups, which, if they're quiet, don't interrupt, but um, (laughs) I'm an early riser. Like, I wake up extremely early, so I would go down to the dining hall in the morning to grab breakfast, and it was empty, because all college kids are, like, sleeping in pretty late for the Mm -hmm. most part. And so there was kids that were down there that were juniors, seniors, and I was a freshman, Then I was like, hey, how's it going? Just... I mean, again, it, it does that outgoing personality-wise and having the ability to go up and talk. But at that early in the morning, not too many people. I thought either. you were going to say you made friends so, with the kitchen staff. Lunch lady, yeah. Yeah. That's That's, that's always he a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Those were actually the older people. Extra dessert. You thought they were juniors, but they were just... <laughs> they were senior <laughs> citizens. They weren't seniors <laughs> in college. That was... <laughs> no, just... Listen, awesome. I'm really good at bowling, and I learned how to cross. <laughs> cross knit. <laughs> cross stitch. Cross stitch. Cross stitch. God. Really? Well, no, but I clearly learned nothing. (laughs) Oh, okay. But yeah, I think that's, yeah, the hardest part about transferring is just the amount of things that you're juggling and trying to keep them in the air so they all don't fall and crumble. Yeah. I think also when you transfer sometimes. I mean, it's a little dramatic. (laughs) (laughs) That was pretty good, though. It's a good analogy. Sometimes when you transfer and your credits maybe don't transfer the way you want, you do have to stay for an extra semester after the four years. I know that happens to a lot of people. That happened to a few of my friends. They had to stay for either one semester or two semesters to make up for the credits that didn't transfer. Um, so that can be kind of hard, knowing that you have to either pay for another semester or stay when all your friends have graduated already. But if it's if it's going to a school, getting the education you want, and learning the program that you want to learn, then it's probably worth it. Typically, schools do, I know because Northeastern let me, they'll let you walk in graduation in the time that you were supposed to um, had you been a, you know, traditional undergraduate. Um, But Blank envelope. Yeah. But again, circling back to, yeah, I got an empty (laughs) diploma case thing. Um, But circling back to community college, you can always investigate if you can fill those credits that you need from community class colleges because they're cheap. Yep. And they're awesome. I mean, my classes at Mass Bay were really, really good. My professors were very dedicated. So it's not, you know, taking the easy way out at all. It's just taking a more financially reasonable yeah, way. Yeah, smarter. And possibly abbreviating the time because you could take them at night or on weekends, which is more available at most schools now, but especially at community colleges. Yeah, and that's, again, going back to the first bullet point or first question that we were talking about where I said transferring, not only thinking about transferring schools, but transferring programs, Mm -hmm. Um, taking the general requirements from a community college is going to save you a bundle, and then transferring into the school and transferring into the program you want. It works both ways for that. So I think that's also important to keep in the the back of your mind, too. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not the right fit. Well, maybe the community college isn't the right fit, but it's a lot cheaper, and you can get through that to... Go to whatever it's the, yeah. And you know it's a temporary like, basis, and it's a you know a couple of classes. It's not the long haul. You don't have to live there or anything like that. From the school side of things too, they have you know students switching majors, switching programs that are already at the school. Yeah. So you know guidance counselors or admissions counselors are, you know, they know how to deal with kids now switching their their plans and their class schedules. Where they can help, you know, make it work. Adjusting you, you know, classes. My, I, I switched majors myself and completely switched, you know, from the school of social and behavioral sciences to the school of management. Yep. But I made sure, like, I was still on track, and my guidance counselor immediately, you know, made sure that I wasn't losing anything in that switch, and I yeah. could still, you know, graduate on time. So they're there to help you as a resource as well. That's good. Yeah, make make plans to meet your guidance counselor often, because you guys are gonna be <clears throat> pals. Yeah, well, acquaintances <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, yeah. that know each other really well. Counseling. Might not go to Blackwater together, but <laughs> still hang out. Hey, hang, hang out at Java Blackwater. <laughs> Get old. I bet there's a place JBW's. that's called that. <laughs> We're just giving them all. There is now. Know, yeah. Again, sponsor the I'm pod. No free ad. Open, yeah. yeah. <laughs> open it right across the street. <laughs> Come on down to Java Blackwater. Uh. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that uh, the guidance counselor the meeting is you should do it at least once a semester, regardless if you're a transfer or you're just enrolled in any sort of program, to make sure that you're on track, making sure that you're taking the right courses. Um, make appointments, don't just show up. Yes, definitely, hmm. definitely. And, uh, <laughs> I was like very serious. Uh, you have no idea how many times I got that eye roll because I just showed up. Help. Help me. But... <laughs> Uh, certain programs too, especially in the technology field, change so rapidly that a program that you enrolled in might not be the same it was when you were a freshman. So certain programs and classes could get dropped. So you need to make sure that whatever you're taking is, is still lining up. Because uh, I had that, that issue uh, being a web dev major. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we're dropping support for <laughs> .NET. It's so, like, oh, okay, well, I was taking that course, so uh, we need to rearrange some things. Um, so yeah, meeting with the guidance counselor is very important, and dealing with stress, talking to your guidance counselor can relieve, alleviate, alleviate. Alleviate. Like 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 <laughs> and if you need more help with stress, counselor counselors. Yes. They have all sorts of counselors at school. It's amazing. All right, thanks everybody for watching this episode of the College Express podcast. We hope you sat back and enjoyed our soothing talk all about the transferring process. And we hope you learned some things. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you have any ideas for the next podcast or questions in general, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the video so we can keep the lights mm -hmm. keep the lights on <laughs> and these microphones working at 100%. So thank you very much for Dan for coming down. Thank you so much for Abby for joining our podcast. And if you didn't know, this podcast comes out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. One question every single day. Friday is the last day where the entire thing gets released in one ginormous podcast. So make sure to follow us and you'll see it then. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Goodbye.